Greetings in the Lord. What a joy it is to gather together in God's house and worship our Savior and our King, to focus on His Word and everything that He has done for us. The focus of our service today will be on how we, crushed and poor in spirit, laden by the weight of our sin, are blessed by God and find refuge in the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us on the cross. The Lord bless your worship this morning. We'll begin with our opening hymn. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins. With his innocent suffering and death, trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. 
He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, you know that we live in the midst of many great dangers. 
and in our frailty, we cannot stand upright. Give us strength and protection to support us in all peril, to carry us through all temptations. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 17, beginning at verse 5. We read, This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. It leaves, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue with our psalm, a hymn setting of the psalm, Psalm 1. Our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12. We read, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insult, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of the gospel. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and
the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 6. This will also be the basis for our sermon this morning. We read, He, Jesus, went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and all, the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our next hymn. Please note our soloist will sing the verses and the congregation will join in together on the refrain.
Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the kingdom. It was perhaps a huge day in the life of Jesus' apostles. Jesus had been going around for weeks now, healing people, preaching about God's love all around Israel and Galilee. And now he called his followers, the crowd following him, up on a mountain. And he appointed 12 of them to be the apostles, the 12 that he was going to send out so that they could preach and they could heal and they could drive out demons in his name. As they walked down from that mountain, those 12 newly minted apostles must have had smiles on their faces, ready to do this work. And they looked out, and there was a huge crowd of people, as we heard, from all around Judea, even from far away there by the Mediterranean coast, who had come to hear what Jesus had to say and to be healed from their illnesses. You can imagine the apostles thinking, yes. This is what it's all about. Jesus doing this amazing work, fixing everything, telling people about God's love and straightening out the problems in their lives. And then thinking, and now we get to do this too. We get to have his powers to accomplish these great things by God's grace. Maybe they would have started thinking about all the crowds that would be coming to hear them speak. Maybe they would have started thinking about their own fame. Maybe they would have thought about how easy life would be, even how wealthy they might become. And then Jesus pulled them aside and looked at them, looked intently at them, and said some shocking words. Yes, he said, you will be blessed. You will be blessed when you're poor, when you're hungry. You'll be blessed when you're weeping. You will be blessed when you are insulted, when you are hated by other people. This is when you will actually have these blessings on your life. Jesus took the whole idea of earthly joy and success and turned it upside down. Yet in this sermon, Jesus said it again and again. Blessed are you. You are blessed. You are blessed despite all the trials, all the bad things, all the horrible things that might happen in your life. God is still pouring out his blessings upon you today. God wants us to know that no matter how bad things might be seeming, no matter what challenges we face, you are blessed. You are blessed as God works in your heart through his word. Let's look at these blessings and the coordinating woes that Jesus spoke in this sermon. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And Jesus is not speaking about those who are poor because they have nothing in their bank account. Jesus is talking about those who are spiritually poor. Those who recognize that when it comes to God, they are nothing. They've got nothing in the spiritual bank. No reason why God should give them anything. You think about a physical beggar, somebody who's had a whole run of horrible luck. Maybe, maybe they're disabled. They're just dependent upon the goodwill of other people in order to get anything. That is what we are like upon this earth, spiritually. We have no claim on God's love. No reason that he should save us eternally, certainly. And in fact, no reason that he should even give us our next meal or let us draw our next breath. We have sinned against the holy God. We deserve his anger. We deserve his punishment. Think about when Jesus talked about the two men who went in the temple, the Pharisee and the tax collector. And the tax collector, he had cheated a lot of people. And he walked into the temple with his eyes downcast and simply said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. That is each one of us. You know, it's no coincidence that Christians, early in the history of the Christian church, chose that phrase to be a refrain in their prayers, and not just when they were confessing their sins, but when they were asking God for anything. Lord, have mercy. That's what we say when we ask for a friend to be healed, or when we ask for there to be peace upon this earth, because we know that we don't deserve to have God help us at all. Jesus says that all who recognize that they are poor spiritually are blessed. In fact, he says, blessed are you, yours is the kingdom of God. As we cry out to God for his mercy, the Lord comes. 
He comes into our hearts with his righteousness and with his peace. You know that Jesus lived for you. He died for your sins. You are forgiven for his sake. You have a new life in Christ. You have a home waiting for you in heaven. Now, by contrast to this blessing, Jesus said, Woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Comfort. Those who people who think that they are rich before God. They think that they have done lots of good things, so God's got to love them. Or maybe because they're so wealthy or they're so strong or they're so smart. Jesus said they are completely mistaken. They have nothing in the bank, we might say, because they don't have God in their hearts. They, he says, have already received their comfort. People have praised them for how smart they are or how good they seem to be. But those praises of mankind are not going to do them any good when they stand on the last day before the judge and have to answer for the fact that they didn't trust in him. They trusted instead in their own righteousness. Jesus' next blessing points out how we spend our time. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. We Christians hunger. We hunger to learn about God and his love. We know that as much as we've already learned, there's so much more that we could learn and so many more reasons for us to keep learning about our Savior. You have experienced this when you were reading something in the Bible and it hits you how wonderful that was. Or maybe you were singing a hymn and the words taken from Scripture just fill your heart with joy. We Christians hunger for the gospel like a person who's been starved for days. And as we hear, as we read about God's love, we come closer to him, and our spiritual longing is satisfied. I remember a person who was searching, searching for some answers to the problems of this life. This person would read this spiritual that book and never really find anything that answered it. The person would go from one religion, one church even, to another, but so often didn't hear the full truth of God. But then when that person heard about God's love, heard about what Christ Jesus had done for them, it's like a light was turned on there for them. I encourage you to keep studying God's word. Come to a Bible class. Or if you'd like, call us up. Call us on our office. You're watching online. Call our office. We'll help you get set up with a personal Bible study so that you can be fed spiritually with the word of the loving God. What if we don't think we need to be fed by God? Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. If we don't keep feeding on God's word, we could be misled about our spiritual condition. We could even forget about God and his love for us. And then when a crisis comes, we don't know what to do. Instead, we're just filled with fear. We don't have God's peace. And on the last day, of course... We won't have an answer when we stand before the holy God. Keep feeding on God's word so that you know that in Christ you have a Savior. Jesus went on, Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Those who don't have Christ in their hearts will look for all sorts of other joys and, and find all sorts of things to be happy about. Church, they figure that can wait. They want to eat, drink, and be merry right now. Maybe you remember that old movie, Titanic, about the crowds there on the ship who were partying wildly, even after they hit the iceberg. They just kept on partying. The band kept playing. A few people went on to the lifeboats, but the rest didn't really worry until all the lifeboats were full and the boat was tipping farther and farther. And then they started running for higher ground. But it was too late. We Christians know that while there are many joys in this life, and we can thank God for them, that's not what life is about, trying to just feel good right now for the moment. We recognize that sometimes we have failed to live as God's children, and that leads us to repent. can even bring tears to our eyes. But then we hear about what God did about those sins, how Jesus came to this earth, how he took our sins on himself, how he was beaten, how he was rejected, how he was put to death in our place, and our debt was paid. And then we can rejoice. Then we can laugh. Then we can look forward to our home in heaven where we will be laughing and rejoicing forevermore along with all of God's people 
right there in the presence of our Savior. One final blessing Jesus mentioned. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Great is your reward in heaven. Some Christians are truly persecuted, not just thinking that they are. Some people are put in jail in some countries, even put to death for being Christians. And the world would say, ah, what a bunch of losers they are. But God says, no, those are the winners. Because when they die, they enter into that eternal rest. They come into the presence of God, their Savior, right at that moment and receive his gift, the gift of heaven. By contrast, Jesus says, those who deny Christ, they don't worry about such persecution. People, he says, will speak well of them instead. But the good wishes of men are nothing. and They don't help you when you're separated from God's love. Again and again through this section, Jesus talks about the bad things of this life, and still he calls us blessed. Blessed when everything seems to be against us. Some people, you know, think that blessed means being happy, like this warm feeling, sort of like happiness is a warm puppy, you heard that phrase or something like that, and, and it is nice to feel, feel happy in that way. But when Jesus talks about being blessed, this is so much greater, so much deeper than any momentary feeling we could have. Being blessed is something that we can focus on for eternity. In fact, if we're just focused on happiness, we could lose out on the true blessings that God wants to pour in our lives. You could compare it to somebody who's maybe addicted to something that's going to be bad for them. Somebody who maybe is a smoker and they say, that cigarette makes me happy, and a pack of cigarettes, that'll make me happy all day. Until, of course, their health goes downhill. And then they regret how they were focused on that type of happiness momentary. We recognize that Satan is the one who wants us to feel happy right now, in the moment, so that we miss out on the spiritual blessings that come by concentrating upon Christ and what he's done for us, the blessings that will last forever. Well, fortunately, our Lord puts us on the right path. Our Lord speaks to us through his word, and and he turns the light on so that we become his followers today, because this is what it means to be blessed. To be blessed by God means living under the care of our Father in heaven. It means being satisfied with your life because you know that God is with you. You are a redeemed child of God and therefore you are loved by God now and eternity. No matter how empty your bank account, no matter how empty your life might seem to be, in Christ you are saved. No matter how many tears, no matter how many insults you go through, You have God's righteousness. You have his love forevermore. Why? Why are you blessed? Because Jesus lived according to these very words that he spoke. Jesus could have come into this world and followed the earthly pattern, the earthly pattern for success. We heard about it in our gospel. Power was coming out of him. All these people being healed, healed, huge crowds following after him day after day. Jesus could have taken the easy way to success on this earth. But instead, he took the hard way. He healed people, yes, the downtrodden, the ones that recognized they were sinners. And then he was rejected for it, mocked for it. Finally, taken to a cross and put to death for the good things that he was doing for us. Jesus lived a poor life with hunger, with weeping, even enduring the insults of this world so that he could pay for our sins and give us God's blessings. You are blessed already now, already today. No matter how bad your life might seem, you are blessed by God because you are his children. You have his forgiveness of every sin that you have ever committed. You have a new life in the Holy Spirit. One day, the day is coming when we will see the promised glory, when we will be sitting at this banquet feast with all of God's people, with Christ there at the head of the table, and with that wonderful joy that we'll have on that day. But already today we have joy because we know that God loves us. We know that our sins are paid for. As Jesus said, The kingdom of God is yours. So we live by faith, and we trust in Jesus' words. Blessed, blessed are you right now. Amen. Please stand. 
The peace of God, which surpasses our understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. In our prayer this morning, we'll include a prayer for Mary Colburn's daughter-in-law, Teronza Colburn, who is undergoing emergency surgery this morning. O oh Lord, those who trust in you are blessed, no matter what trouble or trial comes their way. Lead us to know this blessedness with faith, that we may be sustained amid all the struggles of this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to trust not in ourselves or the things of this life, but in your abundant and life-giving grace, that we may discover the joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us amid things we cannot understand, yet to cling to your mercy and to serve the holy purpose of your kingdom, for which we have been set apart in baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us to hunger and thirst after righteousness, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may honor you with lives of faithfulness and obedience all our days. Lord, in, in your mercy. Knowing the poverty of life apart from you, inspire us to proclaim with energy the good news of Jesus Christ, that all people may know you, love you, and serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Make wise and honorable those who lead us, that the poor may be uplifted, the weak protected, and the cause of virtue honored among us. Lord, in your mercy, show to the sick your healing grace, to the suffering your comfort, and to the dying your peace. Be with those who are in our hearts, especially Teronza Colburn. Lord, in your mercy, replace sorrow with the joy of your kingdom, and release us from our captivity to fear and doubt. Lord, in your mercy, knowing the blessedness of your grace, we are made bold to commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to your care, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, as you're able, uh, take a moment to fill out one of the friendship registers in the back, and if you'd like to contribute one of, uh, to the work of the gospel done here at Emmanuel, you can uh, use the offering plate back there, or there's a form online. As we come before the Lord's Supper, uh, before the Lord's table, uh, in the Lord's Supper, we recognize the forgiveness of sins that he brings to us, and we also recognize that this is an expression of unity. And so we ask that only those who are members of our fellowship here at, in the Wells or ELF churches come forward to receive the sacrament. If you'd like to know more about the practice of close communion, you can read about it on the back of the bulletin. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Lord God, you are worthy to receive thanks and praise from all people. You created the world and all who live in it, and in your mercy, you saved us. We give thanks to you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Though in very nature God, he took the nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin and redeemed us from its curse and penalty. He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the kingdom of grace and glory. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins and fill us with the hope of new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. <coughs> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Mercy Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Good morning once again. What a joy it is to worship together in the Lord's house. A special welcome to any visitors that might be among us, and a special welcome to those of you joining us online. It's an honor to worship together. A uh, special thank you to all the people who made the service today possible, the organists, people running the tech booth in the back, office manager who prints the bulletins and stuff. Uh, we're very grateful for all that. Just one announcement to bring to your attention. Uh, that is that you know, Lenten services are going to be starting up pretty soon. Uh, Wednesday, March 2nd is the first of several. So do take a note of that. Other announcements are in your bulletin. The Lord be with you this week and always.